everybody. You're listening to the Thai Sessions Hawaii <laughs> podcast, where we talk about everything local and beyond. I'm John Yamasato, your host. And joining me today is Mr. Kyle Shimabukuro and it. Devin Dekoba. What's up? Before we begin, let me remind our listeners of all the ways they can stay in touch with the show. There is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at High Sessions. Go to SoundCloud, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, listen to the podcast, and of course you can email us at highsessions.yahoo.com. If you would like to help the show get more music on the channel, please go to patreon.com and donate. There you will get more involved with the show and help determine who and what is filmed. We have a new patron this week, Catherine from oh. Vermont. Wow. Hey, wow. Catherine. That's yeah. awesome. You're awesome. Thank you. So, uh, this made Your me shirt's think- coming. Yep. Shirt is on his way already as yeah. we speak. Uh, well, I'll, I'll get back into this. But Kupu Kupu Landscaping, Landscape Architects, call Kevin Yokomura, 808-722-8685 for a free estimate or go to kupukupulandscaping.com. Of course, Fort Ruger Market. I had the pork santas today as well. I had the chicken Devin. long rice. And they gave us poke, pork and peas, which, poke, we did, which we did. Which we did. You ate, which which they ate, which, which they weren't supposed to. <laughs> but you, you only live once, man. <clears throat> and what is life is without true. poke? You the one with the forty something mercury and Dude. bro, I'm surprised you can still remember <laughs> things. Yeah. He finally sets the alarm off in the airport uh, when he walks yeah. in and have him naked. <laughs> All right, okay. Um so what I was gonna say was uh I was thinking about Vermont and Catherine and stuff and the support that we get from around the the world really yeah. for this channel. And a lot of it has to do with our predecessors like the Makaha Sons and the Slack Key guys and all those guys who toured and went, traveled the world oh, spreading oh. Hawaiian music. Oh, I thought you were were comparing us to the Makaha <laughs> Sons or something. Like, what? <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, no, ain't nobody going to compare us to the Makaha <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. But, you know, there there is a <clears throat> list of guys, Jake Shimabukuro, one of yeah, them. Yeah, spreading who aloha around the world. Continually yes. traveling, and we really appreciate yes. those people because it, it is, it is uh, from... Um, you know, f- when you're looking at from outside in, it looks like uh, very glamorous and all that stuff. But it's a it's work, man. It's a grind to a travel grind. and just continually Especially be when on you have the to road. travel with Herb. Especially when <laughs> you have to travel. Herb. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him this weekend. He's doing well. Yeah, nice. that's good. Doing well. You know, because you guys, I think you and Herb got to give yourselves credit too. Because I yeah, mean, you, you guys, guys travel too, man. And you travel. And some well, Herb, so you Herb did much more than me. I, I I travel a lot of uh, fun and convenience. Herb travels to work and. Every time I talk to them, it's like, where did you come back from? Oh, I was in, uh, I was in Las Vegas this week. And we, <laughs> da, 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 you know? He's always like, got to do that voice. It's, it's, it's like, dang, dude, that, that is nonstop. When's, when's your next overseas travel? Next overseas is October, going Where's back going? to Japan. Oh. Yeah, but, but I have nothing till then. But by then, Herb will have 18 trips, wow. you know? Wow, I wish we could follow so, you. Well, Carry you, a you guitar are. case or something. Hey, we should, we should talk about the uh, next year thing. We let's have him on and then talk about it. Yeah, okay. Well, we are going to be going to Japan, the three of us together next year. Yeah, we're going to have a podcast up there. Yeah, and yeah. There's, there is an opportunity for possibly some some of you to join us if you are listeners of the show. And yeah, I'm not sure what the count is now as of now, but I'm, there might be some opening. But are we like 13? 18, I think, maxes out. No. Are we yeah. at like I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked to Lanai in a while. Hmm. Well, let's have him on and maybe we can talk about it. Yeah, okay. You know? I'll, I'll talk to Lanai about it. So today we don't have a guest. We had a guest, but uh, there was a family emergency, which is understandable. So they mm-hmm. they weren't going to make it. They gave us enough time to find somebody else, but I thought yeah, it's been a while since the three of us kind of mm-hmm. sat and talked. And yeah. I wonder so, when they. So don't turn off. No, I think we're, they turned it, it off. It's just going to be. I know. Yeah. It's just going to be the three of us, but we promise it may actually be interesting. I don't know. And once they saw any of us three on it, I think. I think we lost a lot of viewership. Well, you know what's interesting? So this morning I wake up and I go, well, what, what are we going to talk about? And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to write into ChatGPT. And I typed in... Questions? ChatGPT, please provide to- insightful and interesting topics for the High Sessions Hawaii podcast. Oh, man. And it came up with like 15 different okay, things. Okay, let's, let's try to answer them. The but, but, well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't save it, but I have a couple in my, in my memory. <laughs> That would have no, been no, a podcast you know right there. <laughs> well, because the thing was, the, it went deep. It was like, what are the cultural significance of Hawaiian music and, you know, this? And one of the questions I remember was, how does t- how did tourism affect Hawaiian music? Uh, wow. You, you know, like stuff like that. And I'm like, man, this is a little too... T- I just want to talk about farts and stuff <laughs> for an hour. I don't well, want to talk about... We talk cult- about that too. Cultural significance and, and all that. 
you know. Well, let's talk about tourism and affecting co- the Hawaiian music. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, it clearly did, right? Because but I think there's a renaissance now. Where we went back from that tourist kind of Hawaiian music to real Hawaiian music now. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I guess so. But I, okay, so you think about Hawaiian music. Old Hawaiian music was storytelling, right? Yeah. And then, um, then tourists start coming to Hawaii. Then it becomes commercialized, right? Then you have the hapa haole. Then you get tiny you get bubbles. And, you get Hawaii you calls. Know, right, Hawaii calls like that, yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yep. Then you have Hawaiian Renaissance, which is like westernized instruments playing Hawaiian music. That's the Peter Moon, 1978. And here we are now, like... Oh, more like 1968, but yeah. 68, okay. Because okay. that's when uh, Sunday Manoa came out with their album. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. 68, 69. 68, 69 was when... Really? Um, it was that long ago? Wow. Yeah. That's when, uh, that's when Guava Jam first came out. I remember it because it's the first album my parents owned in our in our house, or at least that I remember. You know, I remember my mom putting you, it on. You listen to that at that time until now, it's still holds, Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kavika, Kavika, once it starts, you're like, oh, wow, the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power of it. And the and the um the actual backlash that they got for doing that with the chants. Because, I mean, Kavika is an actual chant. Right. And they took the chant, they put it to music, and everybody, what the hell are you guys doing? Yeah. And... You know, I mean, now it's a now it's such a classic, and at the time, people were like, "Whoa!" And, and people nowadays would call that traditional. Yeah, like that's yeah, because yeah, totally. it has Hawaiian lyrics. It's not even totally. like uh, Molokai slide. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you, then you got your sudden rush. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Trying to take it to the to the, the hip hop level, right? Stuff. You know. Well, and it, even we had this band called Poe and the Four Fathers on High yes. Sessions recently, and, and they're. Spoken they're like a poetry kind of thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a kind of almost like a rap, yeah, mm. funk kind of thing, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Where I we, liked it, how, I did too. Yeah, just like something fresh and different, you know. Yeah, so we've come a long way, baby. It kind of sounded reminded me of um like Arrested Development. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Kind of sound, you know, where you're telling stories, but in like poetic rap. Po- Arrested Development, man, that's a callback. To yeah, the, to, I I used to love those guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. '90s hip hop was great. Yeah. Naughty by Nature. Well, you had a whole kind of genre of rap that was dubbed different. You had Two Life Crew mixed in the same time with everything. Else. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know it's funny because now nowadays you would just f- hear that on TikTok. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Asa and I've been watching this uh, show called Unlocked. It's on it's on Netflix and it's basically um, and it's funny because it he Asa heard about it at school like the teacher played the trailer for them and it is like full of swearing because so they take this high level prison so these are all like high convicted felons okay and normally they're locked in their cell twenty three hours a day they have one hour to come out and socialize and then they go back right and the sheriff is like so it's, it's real real it's a documentary kind of style. And he's saying, you know, I want to try to give them more freedom. And, and you, in, in, I guess, Europe and stuff, the prisons aren't aren't like that. They're more like rehabilitation style. So he's he lets them out of their... So that's why it's called Unlocked, because they're all let out of their cells. And then they're trying to, like, create a community within there that everybody can get along. And okay. they can get responsibility. So hopefully by the time they... If they get out of prison, they can start functioning in society again versus... You know, you just hold him in a cell for 23 hours a day. Your son, who is in intermediate mm. school? Yeah, he's 12. Okay. So he's okay. 12, and the teacher yeah. <laughs> showing him this. showed him this Well, thing. he played the, the trailer. Okay. So, I, you know, I don't think there's any swearing or anything in the trailer. But then when you watch the show, I mean, these are fellas. Right? So every other word out of yeah, the Yeah, but he recommended F-word. watching this show so, to your I son? Know. There's hip-hop in it is what you're trying to connect to? No, so what I'm saying is that uh two life crew the the, uh-huh. the the verb the language yeah is like just saturday evening tv yeah, for yeah, us yeah. now oh yeah uh, you know well for you for i got a, yeah. my son i got my son in the next room swearing and i'm like hey i remember <laughs> when i first heard two life crew yeah i remember too and i'm like oh my god my parents can't hear this thing. <laughs> you know you have to change the um tape inside out the cover so nobody knew what it was you know? what really yeah I Somebody gave that, me a tape collection. I'm not going to mention who because they're going to throw it away. I said, I'll take it. And it yeah. had like Nas and had all this kinds of stuff. I had one yeah. inside out. And I opened it up. It was two life crew. <laughs> I think 
she was hiding it from her parents at that time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was such a, it's such a, um, like taboo thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's why well, only rated X album. That's why. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that whole thing. It was such a, it was such a big thing that they got banned. How did they right. even they get airplay went. with that thing, though? I don't think they got they didn't airplay. Get airplay. So how did they get big? Because because the PMRC, right, Tipper Gore. Uh-huh. Right, they right, took right. it upon themselves. That was to the say, first one that had explicit lyric labeling. It wasn't the first one, but it was the one that that was they expi- they specifically said this album is is uh, inappropriate for children. It's swearing and it's talk about sex and blah blah blah. And they say we want some pussy, <laughs> and then that that's how the whole PMRC started. And then they put all the labeling the on the lyrics. records. Yeah, and yeah. As soon as they put the labeling on the records, we all went. They're swearing. I want that one, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it. Yeah, but it, if you think about it, how did we get into? Well, I guess it was MTV. Um, no, no, it wasn't MTV. It was actually, it was actually just the music because that that particular style of music was starting to a- appear. So it was them, NWA, all that kind of stuff. So when all of that stuff came up, so it was underground, they went, kind of. Yeah, it was underground, and then when the PMRC brought attention to it. It exploded and everybody wanted to get it because you can't tell a kid, right? Don't, don't get look this. at well, that thing. I was telling Kyle there was this guy that I was listening to on a podcast, and he does studies about um, what people perceive as popular mm-hmm. and what is really popular. Because mm-hmm. when you ask people in public certain things, they'll answer a certain way, but then you ask them in private, they answer a different way, right? Oh, yeah. Always. But he was talking about the war on drugs when Nancy Reagan and all them came out and said we're gonna do a war on drugs we're gonna do this campaign they hired the greatest advertisement this is your brain on drugs you know and it just flooded and what they found was you know the kids you know they thought that oh kids do drugs because they think it's cool and so we need to show them that it's not cool yeah but when they had all this advertising and it was always in front of their face the kids thought Oh, everybody's doing this. Oh. You know, because it's so prevalent. I see it everywhere, right? So all these kids are doing it. So maybe I I should try this, you know? So now they're saying that those ads backfired? So they're saying, yeah, they're saying that basically it was just a gigantic advertisement, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Because kids kids don't think, they they don't get the message really as well. Yeah. Because their brains are not as developed. But they just perceive it as... Oh, man, I didn't realize that all my friends... I didn't realize I was missing out on this. Yeah, everybody else is doing this, you know? But in re- and in reality, only a very small portion of kids were actually doing drugs. Mm. Right? I'm actually surprised you never did drugs, Carl. <sighs> no, I, no. Yeah, yeah. It's actually quite surprising. Why? I don't know. Because you were yeah. always anti-establishment. Yeah. I mean, that's your whole that's your whole thing. <sighs> so the fact that you were like anti-establishment and then went. Nah, I'm not gonna do drugs. I was I, like, <clears throat> what? You know, except uh, for the story that you told about getting stoned the one time that made you super paranoid. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was talking to one of my neighborhood friends, my mm. old neighborhood Thomas, right? Mm, yeah. And we we're like, you know, we were surrounded by drugs. Oh yeah. You know, in, yeah. in, in our neighborhood, city or, and where, come we, on. where we live. But a lot of us, in like my friends around that age, mm. did not do. And yeah. the reason why was because. There were older brothers and older people that were uh, on it already, and we saw mm, the results, mm. and we were afraid to be like that. So we purposely avoided it. Interesting. You know? Because, I mean, we've seen it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I saw it too. Know, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. what made, made us too. not cool. think about that. You know, you think beer, and that? beer and stuff was different, right? You know, because the, yeah. you know, your parents drink beer, and you see the effects of it, and, you know, of course, in, in excess, it becomes nuts, but, mm. you know, we knew how to control that. But when it came down to drugs, and we've seen our older friends, brothers, and yeah, so they get out of control. All out and yeah, we're like, ah, we don't want any of that. So it actually was <laughs> by you, by example that we did it. Do you think that? Um, so we had a whole generation of um, music people on drugs, right? From the seventies all the way till now. I see a lot more artists being like, I eat healthy, and I'm. It's all about my body, and uh, you know. Do you think the music do, sucks do because think, of no drugs? No, I'm not. Well, well, that's interesting. No, I mean, well, right now, a lot of a lot of music is written on mushrooms and other other kind of psychedelic stuff that's now considered legal. You think really? I, I, definitely, you need to escape and get some kind of inspiration. Some of these people to get creative, you know. And I think interesting. I think 
probably Pacololo is super popular for the escape of yeah, creativity yeah. and stuff like that. But but then it's funny because you hear of like a lot of drug overdoses, but it's a lot of the older. No, I take that back. I was gonna say it's a lot of the older artists that maybe were already in that world. Well, now they're yeah. overdosing for a different reason. Well, you listen to they, used to they used to overdose because they got hooked on the drug and kept yeah. it going. But now they're overdosing because the drug that they're taking is not the actual drug or mm. it's too strong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they end up taking yeah. a like, bigger dose. We're really sorry, by the way. We're bumming everybody out about the overdosing <laughs> yeah, on drugs. Yeah, and again, you know, <laughs> kids don't do don't yeah. do these things. Well, the thing know? is, it's the, the three of us, the, all three of us have never really done hard drugs no. like the no. the most you've done is smoke pot i don't think john's ever smoked pot i've no. never smoked no. pot and, and we've any all three of us have found a way to find creativity without doing that yeah kind of man stuff. Mm-hmm. so it is possible what i'm saying is back in the day like aerosmith and all that kind of stuff they wrote oh, yeah. stuff while they're yeah, on yeah. it which today i don't think they dude could. there is no way strawberry letter 23 gets written without freaking drugs i'm sorry but yeah all the all the pink floyd stuff there is no way any of that stuff gets written without yeah. drugs because yeah. holy shit man yeah. it's crazy well i mean when you're a kid what did you do to be creative creative i don't know um i don't i don't even remember being a kid for the most part <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to stay creative when you're a kid i started doing theater i started doing drama stuff mm-hmm. once oh, i did that yeah. once i did that that was but it was also i think being a being an only child you kind of had to because i remember vividly like my parents would buy me army, you know, like little army men. Yeah. And then while they're driving from, while well, we're driving from Kona to Hilo, I'm like playing little battles with my army men and being all dramatic and all this kind of <laughs> stuff. But it's just me because my sister wasn't around at the time. So it was just me. I think there. that's good, you know, because so, um, you know, I hang out with my son quite a bit. and But then like the other day, this weekend, I, I forgot what I was doing. Like cleaning the house, you know, putting stuff away. And then he's out there throwing the ball at the wall by himself. And I thought, right, maybe I should go out there and throw the But I got stuff I got to do, you know. And I'm like, you know what? He can have an afternoon where no one's playing with him. He just got to figure out yeah. mm-hmm. what to do by himself, himself, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's healthy. What you did know, he end up doing? He just threw the ball around, yeah, throw the ball. And he had, got on his scooter and he was going up and down the driveway. And stuff. That's how you. That's how you know he's not a teenager yet. Yeah. Because <laughs> boys find other ways to occupy time once they become teenagers. And then you're like, just, just, it's, he's been in the bathroom for forty-five minutes. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> so, so the other thing that was interesting that happened this weekend. Now that you mentioned, what did I do this weekend? My daughter went to the 50th State Fair. Oh, oh yeah, I saw them you, setting Yeah, it that's up. open now. I forgot about that. But what's crazy is, so I went to pick them up a little after 10 o'clock. Empty. I go to, bruh, the parking lot looked like nothing was happening. Mm, so I wow. thought, oh, was it closed already? And then she comes out, I'm like, was it, were there people in there? And she's like, oh, it's like, nobody's there. Well, because so nobody like, realized it's happening. I think that's part of it. I haven't, yeah, heard, anything I haven't heard about anything about it. We that. drove because we drove past it on Saturday, and we're you know we're taking the off ramp to go back to Kailua to Windward Side. Yeah. And I saw the lights and I went, oh wow, they're setting up for 50th Day Fair. And my daughter goes, oh no no, it's open already. I'm like, it is. I had no idea. Well, what do you and they've been about- open for like a week and a half, almost two weeks. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah, it's been open for a while. Well, no, okay. Is it because they don't have all the rides, or do they have all the they rides? They have all the rides. Oh, they have the rides and all that but stuff. My, it's just bad. I was saying it's like it's like six bucks a ride now or something. Yeah. So well, it's you, just expensive think, then. Yeah. My do daughter you, went. She spent. She said she spent two hundred bucks. What? Yeah. So yeah. do you, do you think it's because you know everybody's like gas is expensive, bread is expensive. So now it's like they're gonna start cutting back on. You Possibly, know, but people but people still go. It's just a matter of you finding. Well, I mean. You're also open in the middle of graduation season, which I guess it happens yeah. every time. Yeah. But yeah, right. It's it's during graduation season, so it's really hard but, to get away and do it. And but I, I remember you could buy a hula hula chicken plate, and sit underneath the tent, and just watch entertainment all day long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't I don't know if they do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. yeah, I remember we used to play it almost yeah. every year. Fifty yeah. That was a great yeah. gig. You yeah. know, is that? I mean, maybe it is happening. We just don't know. <sighs> I, I don't know. But yeah, this is, was really interesting. I, I don't mm. know if it's just like these old traditions are... Because the other thing that I notice is that the kids, they do different stuff now, right? Because 
they're all on their phone and whatnot. So mm. my son, he rather played video games with his friends, with him just sitting at home versus them all getting in one room. Yep. And, my son and, like that too. And I gotta, yeah. I gotta admit, I'm like that. Like sometimes I go out with my Fortnite friends, and I'm like, man, I wish we'd just all go home and we jump on the Fort- <laughs> to the Fortnite, you know. <laughs> When you go out with your Fortnite friends, <laughs> don't they all wish that at the same time that they should, well, they, they should just all, all go back to their room? They all and, drink. Oh, they all. So oh. usually it's at a barbecue and they're all drinking and stuff like that, you know. So I think they enjoy that just as much as Fortnite. Do they which, talk? Do you guys sit around drink and talk about Fortnite? Yes, we do. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so scary. <laughs> Okay. Well, there's stuff to talk <laughs> about. Their strat. Well, you know, they just released this new season, and it's all about cars, which is driving me nuts. But, huh? Like, no pun intended. Oh yes, no pun intended. Yeah, but yeah. You so mean, there's things to talk about. Are you kidding me? Like what? What? Oh, never mind. Driving, driving me. Nuts. So, you, so you think it's just people don't know about the 50th safety? I think it's because you're on I, the radio. Are they? No, they're not advertising with us at all. Interesting. 50th State Fair. Oh, I gotta tell you a story of why I'm so traumatized with the 50th State Fair. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. So when I was a kid, and I'm sure I didn't dream this because it freaked me out for years. <laughs> <laughs> you know how when when you're a kid, you just go 50th State Fair had this little tent dedicated to all these little boots that were yeah, showing yeah, yeah, things, yeah. educational yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. So I remember as a kid, I was probably like maybe eight, maybe seven years old, I was walking through that thing. And there was a the boot set up about reproduction or something like that, and inside the boot was a mayonnaise jar with a fetus inside. No, I promise. And I freaked out because I never know what that was, and then I realized what it was, and I freaked out. And ever since then, every time I went to the fetus state fair, I'm like, I don't want to go to this. Wait, 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 wait! Not a human fetus, like a pig fetus or something. In my head, I remember seeing (laughs) it was a human. (laughs) Human fetus in a bottle, <laughs> like in a jar, like See, a science experiment. The imagination thing. on you, my friend. I, I know it, it's pretty amazing. No, so so if any of you remember that as a kid, that was farm fair, boo. Th- this is what it, I, farm fifties. They were same thing. Why would no, it's not fetus, the same thing. Why would a fetus be? Because it was the farm fair. When you had the farm fair, you had all the stuff. Oh, so you with think the I saw a guys. pig fetus instead? Yeah, of, yeah. yeah. I, I think think saw that's pig fetus. Saw. They were showing you the the reproductive cycle of a pig or a horse or something. Does a pig fetus look like a human fetus? Little, I mean, mm, I mean, it's wrinkly and it's small. I mean, you can't really. And you said you're seven or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, are you, are you could, googling yes, pig? No, 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 no. I I got a. Uh, but I can. Oh, you just take. I was traumatized all these years from looking at a pig fetus. Yeah, I don't. I pff, did. You guys have to dissect the pig in in no. high school. No, no, I dissected I a frog. Stuff. But you have to kill the frog too. No. Why would you have to kill the frog? They kill the frog. Well, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they make you catch, when they catch, catch your own. Up. What? Yeah. Catch your own frog. I don't think they do that anymore, Kyle. It's kind of no, brutal, yeah. no. But yeah, we had to do frog. We had to do the pig fetus, and then I, and then like, I, I didn't care for it. This is in high school, and then I go to. Uh, college and I'm in bi- you know I'm in biology and we had to do cockroach and I, th- I think a pig again and I was like ah oh, man yeah another pig fetus. Uh, oh <laughs> another no you know. but that was born already no it's no more umbilical pig, cord it's a dead pig no yo it had the umbilical cord on it yes all right this you is, mean uh, like that oh that could have been it <laughs> 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 I don't know. Go look up pig fetus if you want to see it. Uh, and make sure you get the one with the uh, umbilical cord on it. It's quite it's quite alarming. Well, right. this podcast has just gone sideways. I know. Well, well we, okay, we, wait. Straight I, from I the chat GPT. I yeah. had one thing I wanted to uh, uh, to talk to you about. Because this okay. happened last night while we were driving home from a, uh, like a get-together with some friends. So we're um, we're on the road. We're on Kamehameha Highway. I talked about this on air, actually. I, I wanted to get your, your thoughts. Okay. So we're driving along Kamehameha Highway. Um, and we're passing by the um, Hawaii Memorial, right? Yeah. As we're driving, there is a, uh, we're in the, le- it's a two-lane highway, right? So we're in the left-hand lane, and right in front of us is a forerunner and then a Chevrolet truck, one of those big Chevrolet okay. trucks, okay? So while we're driving, the forerunner pulls out, goes around the Chevy. Okay. Okay. As soon as he goes around, I went, uh-oh, because the Chevy goes, and he chases the guy, and he's all of a sudden, he's like on his ass and just like following him. Um, 
and he pulls up alongside. He throws something at him. He's wow. shaking his hand at him. Whoa. And I was like, why is this guy so pissed off? And my daughter is recording the whole thing. So she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Of and I, I was trying to figure out what was happening because he, the guy in the, she, the Chevy, he was in the fast lane. And he was going slow enough that the forerunner overtook him. And yeah. when you're driving in the slow, when you're driving in the fast lane, people can pass you. So I didn't understand why the guy in the Chevy decided he needed to run. Like he literally, he was, he was, sorry, this is visual, but I mean, he was, he was driving like this. And all of a sudden he did one of these, like he, like he was going to like try to bang him. And I went, what are you doing, dude? Like what's happening? So he, and there's a couple stoplights along the way, right? So um, we get to the one that's under the overpass for the H3. So we get to, we get there and I'm like, oh, it's a red light. And there's a car at the red light already, right? Mm -hmm. the, the forerunner pulls, goes down, right? And the, the truck is waiting. The Chevrolet is still side by side with him. He pulls up to the side and suddenly guns it, goes around. Like the light is red. He guns, goes around that truck, almost causes an accident because people are coming in the opposite direction or the side direction from the H3. Yeah. So he cuts that person off to get out and get out ahead. It doesn't really matter because the light turns, turns green, green and, and the Chevrolet, Chevrolet takes Chevrolet. off yeah, after yeah, yeah. him again. And it just so happened, like it started to go up, like they were going to Castle Junction. I went, oh no. Because I thought, if we're going to have a red light and this guy's going to get out of his car and they're going to, you know, there's going to be a fight. Or a shooting. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm trying to call, I'm trying to call the cops. Like, can you guys come check this out? Because this is not good. Um, and I, it's been a while since I've seen anything even remotely like that. And it was just like, I, I think people are just, what? He caught him on the wrong day, man. The guy was on edge, had a bad day, needed something to get triggered, and that triggered him. I mean, I read some of your triggering posts off. Yeah, but I'm not poly. chasing. But you don't, okay, you, you, yeah, I yeah. chased a couple of people. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, you know, but I'm not going to get out of the car and get into a fight because that guy turns out to be a large soul and he yeah. gets out of his car. I'm like, hey, yeah. hey. just want to make sure but you're But you know, okay. I, I, get, I get it. I get why you get frustrated because when I even have to go uh, pro city on a Friday, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and i stuck in that traffic i'm yeah. like i get it i'm it's, it's frustrating man to, to deal well with it's that. frustrating because people don't understand the rules of the road right? well, not only that even when i go costco and deal with the people in the parking lot mm. it drives me nuts yeah you yeah because so, they don't they don't really pay attention no. or or just in costco yeah not paying attention <laughs> to like, like, like big aisle but you see like three shopping carts together and they're just cruising and they fucking stare to each other i'm like <laughs> 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 so I, I don't know and uh, the part about it that was rough was I, I watched my daughter record the whole thing on mm. her phone right and so yeah. i'm trying to figure out what is the lesson to be learned from this that i need to teach her and uh, the only thing i could come away with was you know don't be a dick while you're driving um, and and just be careful i so i actually had to give her the the note that hey if somebody's chasing you drive toward a police station Call nine one one and drive toward the police station at the same time because I don't know I. If you call me, I can't help you. I mean, I can jump on the, I can jump in my yeah. car and, but what are I gonna do? Or drive right? to anywhere that's crowded. Well, you know, that's and, the and, thing, and, right? Know. There was, I mean, it's weekend. There was nobody on the road, so it was yeah, pull in a McDonald's or a parking lot, and you know where it's where it's mm. crowded, and just go into the. Well, people are losing their minds, man. Well, they just it's it's the world we live in, man. I guess so. Well, I was noticing. I've been noticing that, uh, you know, I live in Hawaii Kai and I drive out to town almost every day. And there are clearly homeless people that just are dotting the path from yeah. Hawaii Kai to Kahala Mall. Yeah, just really? walk. I don't know where they're going. Yeah. I, the same they're, they're walking? They're, they're walking wa back and yeah, forth. They're walking, they walk the whole walking back, back and, and forth. forth. Really? I yeah. see them every morning. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know where they're going. I think they just do the loop maybe and just keep But it's walking. something I've never seen my whole 40 something years only the last two huh. years maybe they're starting yeah. to you know yeah make it out this way so yeah, yeah it's, huh? times are hard man yeah hmm. now d did you folks do anything special for memorial day you know i watched the lantern floating festival on tv oh yeah night. yeah yeah and it's always no matter how much you watch i think i think it's always touching to watch right yeah it's pretty Pretty moving and pretty incredible to watch. Why, why but if you've you ever been there in person, you ever went there in person? Well, explain what it is first for those who... Because I think it's pretty unique to Hawaii. Yeah, it's no. done every Memorial Day. 
and the Lantern Fruit Festival is to yeah. Sh- you, in fact, you know, you can explain the concept behind behind that thing, <laughs> why, right? Why have to do it? You know, you know the religion behind that, right? No, it's just Shinyoen, which is a uh, they pride themselves on not. I mean, they're not Buddhist, they're yeah. not Christian, they're non-denominational, not, yeah, kind of a non-denominational thing, and um, they felt like it was a uh, it's a chance for people to remember loved ones who've passed on. So. Um, the idea, if you're watching, so once our, our friend from Vermont, if you're watching, so on Memorial Weekend, what they do is every, is it Monday or is it Sunday? It's on Monday, yeah. Monday. It's on actual Memorial yeah. Day. Yeah. So what they do is you we gather at Alamona Beach Park. Um, uh, the Shinyuan people set up a huge tent and you are um, allowed to make these um, uh, these boats. Like these little mm-hmm. little boats, and you write the names, put little pictures, message. messages of of appreciation and and love for the the people that have passed on, and then right around sunset, um, it's a huge thing where everybody goes out into the water and they put their boats in the water and uh, lets them float out, and there's a candle inside, so it it's it's really beautiful. It like lights it, up the whole beach. Yeah, it lights up the whole the beach, water. and people sit yeah. there, and there's a ceremony and all that stuff. Um, and over the years, it's just grown from this small thing that was they happening. They do 6,000 now. It was yeah. massive. Yeah, massive. 6,000. Only 6,000? It seemed like a lot more last no, night. No, because my um, friend, I was talking to her, and she said that they went down at like 10 o'clock, and it was 6,000 You could slots or whatever. And she said the line didn't even move. Yeah. Yeah. Like for, for, yeah. Yeah, she's like, there's no way I'm even going to get one of these things. Mm. So. Yeah, they wanted to do it, but well, they only had six thousand this year. I guess they had more, right? No, 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 no. It, did you? It's grown mm. to where yeah. they can only let in six thousand. Because I think it's also too. You let that many stuff into the ocean, and then the the thing about it is they pick them all up. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the part. That's the uh, the, um, the the sausage making part of it. Is you you watch it, it's beautiful, and all the boats go out, and then at the end they like. <laughs> Yeah, well, they, they, bring they, them all back. they rope it too, so I think it doesn't. Yeah, it go just out. it doesn't go out into the. But ocean I mean, like, ocean. I think I saw the Hokulea outside there. Oh wow! And, you know, it's it's really a cool. humongous event, yeah. and they did a really good job this year yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's something I always look forward to looking at. You know, every Memorial Day, it's pretty interesting. So if you if you go down, you got to be able to see the event, even if you're just hanging out at the beach park. You're right? there. It's an all day. We all went night, twice. You know? yeah. okay, we lost okay. we lost a few friends, so we went yeah. t- two years in a row. Our gang. Yeah. Went there at ten o'clock in the morning, stayed there the whole day. Wow! And then set up a sh- set up shop on the mm-hmm. corner and just watched the lanterns float right towards us because we we set it on the corner of Magic Island. It's a really incredible thing to witness live. But it's nice to do once, but yeah, uh, yeah. Once you do it one, two times, that's a lot. Because yeah. <laughs> it's a long, it's a, it's a long day at the beach, yeah. and you're just sitting here like. Oh, this is cool, but man, you know, there's a lot of you know, people. Sunburn. <laughs> plus, you got plus again, people. Uh, I don't know. Like that first, that first time we went was really kind of mellow, and everybody was very respectful. The second time we went, there are people like cut in front of us. They're they using our tent. Down, they're oh. using tent. They, we're like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like we had actually staked out an area and people were just sort of walking through and doing whatever they wanted and we're like wow standing dude. on the stand up paddle boards that yeah, we yeah, had yeah, 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 yeah. so we're like yeah. that's not that's not yours yeah. and for you John yeah oh um, yeah you'd get irritated you'd absolutely I think. hate it oh, yeah because yeah. there's too many people watch it on TV for I, you though. I cannot do the crowds yeah I'll watch it on TV yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you know I'd just be worried about bathrooms the whole time because <laughs> there's so many people right yeah yeah so yeah, I can't. Well, I mean, can't. you just got to walk across to Ala Moana. Yeah, I guess so. I, I mean, they don't do the 4th of July thing either now too, right? No. Oh, really? No, they're not going to do 4th of July. Oh. I don't think so. Uh, they're not going to bring it back, you think? I wish they would because that was a gig for me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're talking about the rooftop one on the, the, on the, rooftop on the center. The rooftop thing, but then also they, they the Magic do the, Island. Yeah, the oh. Magic Island, they do the That the rooftop fireworks. one when you guys played was nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was I crazy. I still kind of remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's f- funny. I just remember like... A blanket of people, but I don't, can't, you know, I don't know if you, you've probably no, had the same I'm, I'm, I'm having that same issue because I've, I've talked to friends about stuff that I know we've been to because we, we were together when it happened. Yeah. Or like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, 
Like, I literally don't remember. Like, the Hawaiian style concert thing. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that it happened. Yeah. I remember yeah, right, right, where it right. was. Yeah. But I do not remember specific things about it. I just, I know you guys were there. I know you were there. You know, know what's crazy? I know it was crazy, down though? at Kaka'ako, yeah, and that's all I remember. You know what that's called? That's called pig fetus. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. All these years, it was pig fetus. <laughs> pig fetus. You sure it's not microplastics or something? I, I don't know. No, I was going to say, uh, what's funny is that event... Um, so we d- we did this fundraiser for Molokai High, right? The boss. Yeah, that was the one. And um, the only thing I remember from that day, talking to Imua Garza, who was like this tiny little kid. Yep. Oh really? So it was OP Pickers. Yep. Pure Heart, Honua, Kapena. That was a huge lineup. Dude. Imua. Imua. Yeah. No, who knows? Yeah, Imua I, I don't, too. I don't Imua know. Too. I, yeah. yeah. I don't remember, but yeah, it was a great concert. Oh yeah, dude, it was a huge lineup. And that was the first I'm... concert at that place yeah yeah, yeah. Water i don't water. remember playing i don't remember <laughs> Ho'onua play. i don't remember seeing you but i remember <laughs> this tiny little kitty mua garza yeah and i'm like wow this kid's really good on the ukulele yeah yeah, yeah. Huh? and they're put on last minute like oh we got another band yeah, that's gonna yeah, perform yeah. before everything op pickers and they just came on they came on i was like wow and now they're um they're actually reuniting right because they're doing more stuff yeah 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 we're hoping so. that they have it on the high session show oh nice so the only problem is um uh, one of them plays with uh, Kolohe Kai, and so he uses a lot of his. Uh, That's Kevin. Okimoro? No, not Kevin. No? Kahale? W- one of them plays with. Hmm. And then he uses. He, he doesn't have a lot of vacation time because he, he plays with Kolohe Kai, so he tries to, like, oh, with work, coordinate, you know? Yeah. So it's like, so I got to do it after work, so we'll probably do it up in the house or something like that. Because yeah. it'll have to be a night shoot. Oh. We can get them on the pod, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't sure know if we can get it. all of them on the oh, pod. That's let's try getting more at least. Plus, yeah. 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 Good luck getting more. We're going to have to tackle him and kidnap him. I know. That guy is like super big, crazy Jeez, busy. Man. Plus, yeah. he have kids too, yeah? Yeah, he has no kids way. too. Yeah. So, we'll, so? We'll, we'll try. For you, we will try to get Imua Garza or one of the PE pickers in here. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. And for those yeah. podcasters who do listen to the podcast, you know, if you do want to send suggestions, hey, but we're open. Oh, yeah. And uh, sure. it helps a lot because the hardest part is booking the guests. Yeah. To be honest. I mean, showing up and talking into the microphone is the easy part. But finding people who are interesting to talk to, who maybe have a story. Um, yeah. Th- that's always difficult. Yeah. I, I get really blown away that people take time out to actually come and talk story yeah, with Yeah. I mean, right? well, th- I put it, I would put it this way to the podcasters. You know, we don't have a, a, a massive audience. But even if the audience is, say, like a few hundred people, if I invited Devin down to talk in front of a few hundred people, you'd be like, oh, OK, I'm cool with that. You know, and uh, so just imagine that's that. But it's just, you know, <laughs> over the Internet. Yeah. And you yeah. don't see it happening. Yeah. And it's a, right? just a stepping stone to eventually getting on Joe Rogan for them. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, so, so the, right, Devin, like, okay, so Devin has thousands of people who listen to him in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But I guarantee you there are artists that go in and talk to Devin and they take it very nonchalantly because you don't see the people. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, true. you know, if there were thousands of people sitting in front of them, they would perk up a little bit. Yeah. I'm actually surprised people are m- more, uh, I don't know, they get very self-conscious when it comes to doing radio. Mm. Oh, we're any kind of broadcasting. Because the the idea that the idea that your voice goes out and all these people are so listening. Is it so easier that you think in this kind of environment it's easier because it's pre recorded, it might get edited, it might hit later on to get time to think yeah. about it. Well, because also live radio too, is you're, just live, right? Well, live radio, there's a there's a thought to oh my god, it's mm-hmm. gonna get out to hundreds of thousands of people, right? So yeah. there's that that automatic thing where like you, the the thing goes out there and then it's out there yeah whereas when we're doing these they figure yeah like you said they can edit yeah but well, also I, too, I think i would freak out if i ever went on radio live or even on the news live i would freak out because mm. once you say something you can't take that back anymore it's just there yeah yeah i don't know i'm old and jaded so i don't even notice anymore because so, no. i had i had my friend come on the air last week Kaliko, who does shows who does plays with me Okay. He was like, he's looking around like, I can't believe I'm on the radio. This is so <laughs> weird. I don't know. And I'm going, what? Well, well that's because you've done it for so many. Because you know. I'm old. So, um, but it's like you with the performing or you with the mm-hmm. drawing, right? You guys do it so much that you just kind of go, okay. 
you take it for granted. Like if I sat down with you and said, coach, you show me how to draw. Yeah, but if you had 10,000 people watching me, I would think I'd freak out too. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that though, you know, uh, Mr. But his stuff, but your stuff, dude, goes out and it's on people's bodies all around the world. Yeah, but yeah, they don't know I mean, who I am. So if they hated it or didn't like it, they kind of they find me. How are they going to hate it? That's why they bought it. Well, somebody watching them walk around <laughs> could hate it. <laughs> when was the first time you saw someone with a high life tattoo? Oh, God. When... Maybe like the first couple years out. Yeah. That was it someone you knew? Or? No, that flipped me out, man. People were just sending stuff in and I was like, whoa, I can't believe that. That's amazing. <laughs> and you're like, hey, you missed me, how? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, it's pretty humbling when you see that. Yeah, you know? that is that is pretty cool, man. Yeah. yeah. And then John's got people going, I remember Pure Heart, wow. they were my favorite band when wow. I was 12. <laughs> when I go, my mom used to listen to that in the car <laughs> when I was a baby. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a lot of I remembers. Yeah. Yeah, nowadays. Yeah. But it's those, good, you know. Those guys, um, those guys at the uh, the event, the um, uh, the Japanese uh, oh, culture yeah, center, right. yeah. there, was, there was a whole bunch of guys that were sitting off to the right of, uh, well, to the left of the stage or to the right of the stage for us. And they were fairly young guys. They were in their 20s, maybe. John gets up there, and they're all of a sudden, they're all freaking out. It's John Yamasato. <laughs> and they're, like, trying to give him money, so they'll play. They're yelling out requests and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I know when you guys came up. Because yeah. for them, it was, such a, it was such a thrill, right, to see John Yamasato yeah. play music in front of them. And John's just like, yeah, so uh, anyway. We're gonna uh, yeah, they're throwing money at him. Like, um, they're throwing money at you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think alcohol was involved. <laughs> oh, man, just but, think if you took a little bit of career change, you'd be making a lot but, uh, of money. Man. Yeah, I was like, I will play these anyway. <laughs> you don't have to give me anything. Like, you know, he's all embarrassed because they're throwing money at the stage. He's like, Oh no! I'm like, what are you talking about? Take that money and go, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. Imagine if you're showing a little leg at that time. See what you got, <laughs> God, you know. Well, you know what's funny is so. When you do these gigs now, uh, you too probably get paid in cash, right, sometimes? No, I don't, but yeah. Nobody no. gets paid in cash, John. When you do these gigs, people Venmo you stuff or they oh, pay yeah, in yeah, cash yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Bruh, it's getting harder and harder to spend cash. What do you mean? Because like, you know, a lot, there's places where it's a like card only, you know, oh, or, yeah. you, or you got to walk in to do something or mm-hmm. like even I, when I go to Long Island, I like to use the self-checkout, mm. but they don't want to be feeding those bills in, right? Yeah. So I just use my card there. So I usually use cash for just like food, going out to eat and stuff. I don't even carry any cash. You don't carry cash? You should oh, carry I have a little bit of cash. Card, that's it. I, I charge everything so I get mileage. <laughs> yeah. I choke mileage, but I don't travel. I know. That's why. Yeah. I don't understand. But when I do travel, well, I cash the bugger in and fly first class. And where's your wife? She ride with me first class. You get two tickets first class? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's uh, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that he brings his wife is actually more impressive. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Do we have one more topic? I got one more topic. Okay. We'll do this one more topic. And on a serious right? note, actually. This whole like the other, I know. The other one serious. wasn't serious? All right. Okay. Well, anyway, you know, I wanted to ask you, Devin. Me? You, yeah. Because, you know, we're reaching this oh, this, no. this time this of year when your daughter will be graduating. Yes. And she's be graduating within a couple of days and becoming an adult. Mm, yes. I, I wanted to. Ish. Yeah. I wanted to hear from you as a parent. To advice to other parents on how to how you've been dealing with this issue of Don't hit the having table. having kids, you know, grow up and watching them to this part where they become an adult and they're become pretty much, you know, <laughs> what free self actualized adults. Yeah, no, you know? but that's the thing you realize with kids; they are never out of your life. They are never, uh, yeah, they're they're never free and clear and out of your. Li- if they are, if they are, then there's something wrong with the relationship that you have with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, but she's going to be going away to college. Yeah, but I mean... car now. Yeah, but she knows... Uh, she still feels a responsibility to us. And I think um, we're very lucky in that respect. Mm. Uh, I actually... <laughs> I freaked her out the other day. Because I, I walked into a room just sort of... Uh, and both my both my kids. I walked into a room and I said, you know... I, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I'm really proud of you. Mm. I'm proud of who you become as a person. <laughs> I'm proud that you're finished. She looks, she has her phone. She goes, what? <laughs> I'm like, she goes, 
Where, why are you telling me this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I went, what's, no, I just, what's up? Yeah, and I just said, no, I just, I just wanted to tell you that I'm, I'm really, really very proud of who you are as a person. Because you, you could have turned out so many different ways. You could have been such an asshole if you wanted to be. Yeah. And I know, and, and there's people out there like that. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she is not, I, I would love to say that some of it has anything to do with me and us, you know, raising her correctly mm-hmm. or any of that kind of stuff. But I think it was actually a, a combination of us, my, my wife and myself, but um, but our friends, like you guys, you know? Because I, I, I like to think I surround myself with people who are either better or know more than I do. And if you do that, they always have examples to follow. They always have. And, and I was telling somebody this on Saturday. Um, I think it was Colleen. Mm-hmm. I said, we're very fortunate because... Every first kid that we've all had, right? So, uh, Kimie, Jansen. I mean, we can point to them and we can each say that those kids are great. Like they're. It's not even a. It's not even a. Oh, I wonder, right? They're all just. They're just really great kids. They've, yeah. They yeah. turned out well. They've achieved. Yeah. They've. Uh, I mean, gone to college, not gone to college, whatever. But they've. They've. They've achieved things that we we're hoping they would achieve and, and did it and become contributing people to society because God knows there's enough people that are not like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of that, my kids have somebody to emulate and to see, right? Because like um, Jensen doesn't listen to this podcast, but our, our friend Ryan, his son Jensen, Jensen's the first kid, I think, for all of us. Yeah. Right? And that boy has turned into a remarkable young man. Yeah. And I, I don't mean to say this because he's going to be embarrassed because, again, he doesn't watch. But he is, if, if I were to tell anybody, please follow this kid and be like this kid, mm-hmm. it's him. Mm. He, has a, he has a really good job. He's respectful. He, um, if you ask him to do stuff, he will do it. No, well, okay, he'll complain every once in a while. But generally, um, he's respectful of his elders he, yeah, he's very good natured. Yeah, he's just yeah. a really good natured kid. And to me, if we can raise that, yeah, I'm fine. And you know, I mean, one of the things that was awesome about my daughter was she graduated or she finished school like on Friday. Yeah, so she's done. She doesn't have to go to school. But today, because we, were, my wife and I were wondering, like this week was going to be hell just because she's graduating, but also because. My daughter doesn't have school, and she's the one who drives our son to school. So we're like, oh, shit, what are we going to do? Like, how mm. are we going to get him to school? My wife's got a job in a different place than she had before. I can't because I'm on air. Um, and my daughter said, I'll take him to school. And for her to think of that yeah. without us prompting her. Um, that adult responsibility. Yeah, yeah. But, but to think of it that way. And I know in my, in my heart of hearts, uh, that's something that Jansen would do. Mm-hmm. I mean, we may ask them, but mm-hmm. they will do it. And um, to be able to ask that of your child, or for your child to figure that out on their own, that's yeah. why you. That's kind of what you want. So I was like, awesome. Yeah. Right. So um, as far as her graduating and all that stuff, I mean, I'm. I think I'll be more emotional about it than I thought I was gonna be, but. Uh, only because I'm excited for the journey she has ahead and because mm-hmm. as her dad uh, and because she's going away for school, there's a certain um, lack of control you're going to have, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, and, and she told me last week, uh, no, I, I found out a couple weeks ago that she's going to go to this concert. Like She gets to school and then a week after she gets to school, she's going to go to a concert. And I went, Wh- what? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, you're going to be walking around? by yourself mm-hmm. uh okay but it, it's a rite of passage right are Is you it? checking them into college like if like yes other parents yes which my parents did not no do. no we so didn't it's... hear that man when we well, should... i didn't dorm so. no but like oh yeah i didn't go away either <laughs> but a lot of my friends parents yeah never took them to check into yeah, their yeah. dorm and yeah uh, i think that's uh, kind of a new thing yeah weird yeah dude they take them to all the different schools. They walk them around, yeah, they do yeah. all that stuff, and then it's the drop them mm. off at school. Uh, my wife was never going to let my daughter go up there by herself. Yeah. There was no way. So we knew as a family we were yeah. going to go and well, all that stuff, and it's fine. 
props to you for raising good kids. Yes, congratulations. It's, you know, my sister and everybody. Yeah, my sister and all, all of our friends have raised yeah, excellent kids Yeah, you know, kids and too, like so. your your nephew. Yeah. I mean, Lanson, he's such a good... Like, that's the thing. Yeah. Our, the kids you got are, lucky. They're well, lucky and with good parents. That, that, yeah, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, they could have taken after you and it would have been scary. <laughs> But uh, no, but Lanson is a yeah. is a beautiful kid. He really is. Yeah. He's just such a good heart, and they, you know, they uh, by and large they're all like that. Yeah. And I I I think that's remarkable because normally you get one asshole in all of those kids yeah. somewhere. Yeah. But they've all been just really fantastic, and I um I, I'm really proud of all of our friends for for doing that. Yeah. Even your kids, when your daughter's not being hot hit, she's you know she's great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good job, I'll agree John. With that. Thank Good you. Good job, John. All right. Well, guys, we did it. We got through another oh, podcast. Yeah. Just whole three hour of us. Of rambling. Sorry. Well, not quite an hour. Not quite an hour. 50 minutes. So we'll get like 50 <sighs> views well, on you this guys one. Are, like, anything else? Be- we got 10 minutes. We want to. No, no, try no. We'll, we'll cut it short for everybody. But uh, yeah, we just want to check in. Or ask or... I want to talk about movies just because you okay, said nothing about Thank you for movies. joining us on <laughs> High Sessions Podcast. We will see you next week, everybody. Bye. Take care.